another countdown. Hello everyone, I'm the Omni Slayer and welcome to the year 2015! Yeah, time surely does fly, doesn't it? Feels like it was only yesterday when 2014 just started. Since 2015 just started, everyone decided to do the one thing we always do at the start of every year. Make a countdown about games we played throughout 2014. Yay for our originality! Anyway, 2014 was an okay year for gaming. We've had a few great games this year, though others just fell flat on their faces after being world killed by a monster truck. But fortunately, I just happened to have found 16 games and several honorable mentions to make this list. You heard right. This is not a top 15, but a top 16 games I played in 2014. So yes, this will be just like last year's list, but with one major difference. Unlike last year's list, this one didn't take half a year to make. Anyway, you know the rules. Only one game per franchise, only games I played, though. And also, it doesn't have to be restricted to games that came out in 2014. This is about games I played for the first time in 2014. So with that out of the way, let's get this party started. Hey! Hey! You guys need any help? Terrorists! Hey! It's one of those it's freaks! It's okay. Whoa! No, 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 no! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, What happens when you pit the greatest comic book superheroes against some of the most popular video game characters in an epic showdown of awesomeness? You get Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3, one of the flashiest and most fast-paced fighting games to ever be brought to light. Being an updated version of the original Marvel vs. Capcom 3, it keeps the fast-paced, unique, fluid and flashy 3-person tag team battle gameplay intact while making the character roster a lot more balanced with a few buffs and nerfs to certain characters. Speaking of characters, this game has a very impressive roster of Marvel's greatest heroes and villains like Iron Man, Spider-Man, Captain America, All, Doctor Doom, Wolverine, X-23, Magneto, Storm, Ghost Rider, Hawkeye, and Rocket Raccoon, and Capcom's greatest video game characters like Phoenix Wright, Dante, Zero, Virgil, Chun Li, Amaterasu, Tronpon, Risha, Shienko, Oregon, and Strider Eerie, but strangely enough, no Mega Man. Oh well, at least he got in Smash Bros. 4. They're all pretty awesome to play as, especially with all the treats given to them. But one of the reasons this game is at the bottom of the list is that, besides mission mode, there's not a lot to do in single player. That and the arcade mode is kinda of lackluster with a pretty basic story and one of the cheapest bosses in video game history. But it still wants the fun to play, especially when you're fighting against your friends or random strangers online. Don't worry. I'll punch the guilty. Oh, this fast healing stuff is gonna come in real handy. It's showtime! Rhythm games are the one kind of games that I always found to be pretty interesting, yet never really had the chance to fully experience them. Luckily, Rhythm Thief just happened to be the perfect game for me to get into rhythm games, and it delivered in spades. The story focuses on Raphael. Not that one. This Raphael is a young thief going by the nickname Phantom R, as he tries to track down his missing father with his only clue being a coin with a strange symbol on He then comes across a sweet and kind girl named Marie, who happens to have a violin with the same symbol as the one in the coin, being chased by a man claiming to be Napoleon Bonaparte, who plans to conquer France and become its emperor once again. And I can't say much else about the story without spoiling it, so you're just gonna have to play it for yourselves. The characters are all pretty likable, like the always charming Phantom Mark, the very sweet Marie, the villainous Napoleon, and the stubborn but intelligent outdoor army Charlie, with the exception of one character that is so incredibly vile and monstrous he makes Edward look like a knife. Hey. No spoilers. Sorry. 
Anywho, the best part about the game is, as always, the gameplay. Or to be more specific, the vast collection of rhythm thingy games found in the game. They're very fun, very unique, and also ridiculously crazy. One of the best examples of this is in the mini games where you fight Napoleon's army with your own bare hands. I'm going to repeat that. You fight a bunch of dangerous armored guys armed with Wolverine claws by simply giving them the hand. Mind blown. It really is a wonderful game, and considering we have 14 more games to cover on this list, it only gets better from here. Now how do I end this segment? I know! Last year I got into a very popular JRPG series known as Kingdom Hearts, and I loved every second of it, but the problem was that my experience with the series was very little, since I only played Kingdom Hearts 2 and Bird by Sleep from my friend's house. That is until I finally bought Kingdom Hearts HD 1.5 Remix and played it for the first time, and it was awesome! Okay, not as awesome as Kingdom Hearts 2.5, that one is beyond amazing. But considering I've already played Kingdom Hearts 2 and Bird by Sleep, putting Kingdom Hearts 2.5 on the list would be sort of like cheating. Now let's talk about Kingdom Hearts 1.5, which is actually a collection of three games. Kingdom Hearts Final Mix, Reaching of Memories, and 358 over 2 days. Reaching of Memories was pretty... odd. And to be honest, the card system was more annoying than it was fun. 358 over 2 days is more of a movie than it is a game, since it's just a 3 hour long HD remastered compilation of cutscenes and text. But it's still a very enjoyable and incredibly emotional story to watch. So that just leaves Kingdom Hearts Final Mix, which is actually pretty damn amazing. You play a Sora, a cheerful and silly little boy who has gone separated from his best friends, Riku and Kairi. And with the help of Donald and Goofy, he was tasked with saving the many beautiful Disney worlds he comes across. The remastered HD visuals are just so stunning, it's hard to believe this game was made during the early days of the PS2. It's that good. The gameplay is pretty good and controls pretty decently, though it's not that special, at least compared to later games in the series. There are other flaws in the game like the restricted camera and then the unskippable cutscenes that you see every time you die during a boss fight. But those were thankfully fixed in the Final Mix version, so there's not much to say about the Kingdom Hearts Final Mix except that it has a great story, decent gameplay, an amazing soundtrack, great characters, and it's overall the perfect game for both veteran players to revisit and newcomers to experience the series for the first time. And now to finish this segment with my thoughts on Kingdom Hearts HD 2.5 Remix. Fast healing stuff is gonna come in real handy. Sonic is always about speed, right? So the most logical thing to do would be to make a racing game out of the Sonic series. The first attempt was a failure to say the least. Second attempt went well twice until a certain train wreck of a game was shared out by greedy talentless idiots. And the third attempt? Nailed it. Let's talk about Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed, which is actually a sequel to Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing, a game where you race against other players using not only your favorite Sonic characters, but also a ton of characters from other Sega franchises like Crazy Taxi, Samba the Amigo, and Jet Set Radio. Among the new features and improvements done to the sequel, which included new tracks based on several Sega franchises and new characters like Wrecked Ralph, the one that stood out the most was the ability to change between car, boat, and playing modes in the middle of a race, and they all control exactly as you would expect. In car mode, players can drift and perform tricks in midair to earn boost. Boat mode controls just like a normal boat in real life, complete with realistic boating physics and the fact that you can use the waves as ramps to perform stunts in midair. And finally, playing mode. The fastest of the three vehicle modes gives you the freedom to fly any way you want to, complete with air drifting for boost and aileron rolls, not barrel rolls, to adjust their position. Mario Kart? Eat your now. 
And thank you to Mario who shells back to hell where you came from. No, there's only a place to Mario Kart Wii, which is the only Mario Kart game I've ever played. I need to play a lot of Mario Kart games. Another notable thing about this game is its difficulty. Playing the single player career mode on easy is a cakewalk, but when you do it on normal or hard mode, that's when the game decides to screw you up real good. Not even halfway through career mode, the race is getting incredibly challenging to the point where your driving skills have to be nothing less than perfect in order to beat them. It is pretty damn hard, but it's very rewarding in the end. All in all, Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transform is a pretty damn awesome racing game that serves as the greatest tribute to every Sega franchise ever made. Makes me wonder what kind of amazing Sonic game Sega has done uh... That's great, Tails! Pretty lame. Let's move on before I say something else I might regret saying later on. Oh, this fast healing stuff is gonna come in real handy. <laughs> Platinum Games, like Naughty Dog, is one of those very few game developers that never disappointed us when it comes to amazing games. Uh, almost. One of those games happens to be one of the first games they created, and the number 12 on this list, Bayonetta. Talk about the perfect mix between flashy and epic action slash gameplay and awesome sexy odd badassery from everyone's favorite femme fatale. The story's pretty good as well, as it focuses on Bayonetta, a witch who enjoys killing angels on her free time and works super hard while doing it, and also suffers from amnesia after being locked up in the bottom of a lake for 500 years. From here, it's just Bayonetta kicking angel ass, making cheesy yet funny one-liners, and looking after an adorable little girl named Cereza, whom she forms a mother-daughter relationship with. While also being pursued by an handsome photographer who believes she killed his father named Yosuke, I mean Ben, I mean Sir Garrett, I mean Luca! Why did I think of those three guys when I mentioned Luca? I can't quite put my finger on it. And that's probably not it. The gameplay is as flashy, epic, fluid, and fast paced as any amazing hack and slash game would be, and the bosses are all a blast to fight, especially when they keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and so much bigger that the bosses from God of War series look like hands in comparison. The way you take out these bosses as well as the other enemies is absolutely satisfying. You see that suit she's wearing? That's actually her hair! She can use her hair to not only cover a smoking hot body, but also create giant beast or torture devices to take out her enemies in a very epic fashion. All this grunting is giving me the horn. <laughs> Anyway, long story short, Bayonetta is amazing and a lot of fun to play, with its action-packed action slash gameplay and plenty of badass and heartwarming moments from our beloved femme fatale. I keep hearing the sequel is better in every way, so I might try it out as soon as I get my own Wii U. So, what does this game taught us? Don't fuck with a witch. Oh, this fast healing stuff is gonna come in real handy. Now it is a game that I should have tried out last year, but couldn't because I'm a poor bastard. Kidekos Uprising is a fantastic game in every single way. Well, almost. Uh, let's just get the glaring issue that quite a lot of people have noticed in the game out of the way first. The controls are pretty hard to get the hang of. I mean, you move with the analog stick while using the touch screen for aiming and turning around, and the arrow button for shooting. Sounds complicated, doesn't it? Well, it is. But fortunately, I got used to the controls pretty quick so that I can enjoy what's so freaking awesome about this game and trust me, there are a lot of them. The gameplay is pretty unique since it's divided into two parts. The first one consists of an on-rail shooting segment where you shoot down enemies in the sky, and the other one gives you the freedom to move around on the ground and while also mowing down enemies on the way. It's pretty fun and gives you a great adrenaline rush, but it gets a bit repetitive after a while. And then there's the absolute best part of the game. The characters. Every single character is very likable, entertaining, and most of all, outrageously hilarious. Like the very naive yet royal angel, Pit. 
The cute bloody goddess of nature, Viridi, the sexy motherly troll Lady Palutena, the even bigger troll and one of the most fabulous villains ever, Aedes, the laid back and cruelly phosphorus, and my favorite, the badass dark bone of Pit, Pitu. Seriously, that is the last time I want to hear from two. Fine, Dark Pet, just chill, alright? You want the Blazer in Smash 4 as well? Son of a bitch! Anyway, the dialogue between them is some of the funniest I've ever seen in my life. Whether it's Lady Palutena pulling innocent tricks on Pit, Lady making fun of Pit, or Lady being the most fabulous troll ever. Though Disney series is much better. Overall, the controls may be really hard to get used to, but the unique, flashy, and fast-paced gameplay, a cast of colorful and funny characters, and incredibly hilarious dialogue more than make up for it, making it one of the best 3DS games ever. Oh, this fast healing stuff is gonna come in real handy. <laughs> Capcom is one of those gaming companies that get a lot of hate usually because of how poorly they handle their DLCs, cancelling games that were hyped up to no end, and not releasing certain games outside of Japan. But even after all the glaring mistakes they made, they still make some damn awesome games. I'm surprised they only got into some of their series last year, one of them being the Devil May Cry series. I just bought the Devil May Cry HD collection last summer, and there are my thoughts on each game. The first DMC was pretty okay, it had great gameplay that was Wide every on powerful, fast, stylish combos, and introduced us to everyone's favorite devil hunting badass, Dante. But there were some problems, like the difficulty rises dramatically, not even halfway through the game, and some of the characters are pretty underdeveloped. Especially Trish. Why is that generic boring bitch a fan favorite? I have no idea. The less said about DMC 2, the better. And DMC 3? Freaking awesome! This party's getting crazy. Let's rock. Oh yeah, now this is a part I can actually get into. Everything that was bad about the first DMC is fixed in this game, and everything that was actually good about the first DMC has been vastly improved. It really is the BEST DMC GAME EVER! Ah, Scully, what the hell are you doing here? Sorry JP, I just came here as soon as I heard you start talking about DMC 3. Oh, right, it's not a spoiler. Shouldn't have seen that coming. So, uh, now that you're here, uh, mind uh, helping me out with this segment? Ah, sure! It's not that I have anything important to do right now. Would you gonna work on your next video right about now? Oh, thanks for reminding me, you annoying jerk! Hey, at least I don't jerk off the pictures of Zell. Hey, Jackass, what's where you punch your annoying fair rates? What did you say? Nothing. Let's just start talking about DMC3, alright? Alright then. Like I said before, the MC3 is an improvement from the previous two games in every way. The gameplay is still as fast paced, stylish and intense as ever as you mow down demons and other kinds of monsters with powerful and awesome combos unleashed by Dante's signature sword, rebellion and dual guns every ivory, among other awesome weapons you will find throughout the game. The characters are also much more fleshed out as well. Dante in this game is much more hilarious with his amazing one-liners and much more badass than in the first game. So much so that he pretty much became, to the eyes of many DMC fans, the ultimate god of badassity. That's not the word in any vocabulary. But it perfectly describes him, right? Good point. The other characters in the game are just as awesome as Dante, the best ones being his twin brother Virgil, who plans to open the door to the demon world in order to get a shitload of power, and Lady, who is actually pretty damn awesome, sexy as all well and a million times better than that bland excuse for a love interest Trish. Again, why do fans prefer Trish over Lady? You know, I ask myself that question every time I play DMC3. This game is also one of the hardest games I've ever played. Trust me, this game will kick your ass right at the beginning if you're not careful. Like, it will totally utterly destroy you many times way before you reach the half point of the game. Luckily, since I got the HD collection that had the special edition of DMC3, there is a much easier difficulty for inexperienced newcomers who want to enjoy the game without having to die so many times. Overall, DMC3 is an action-packed game with fast-paced and fluid gameplay, awesome characters, cheesy yet hilarious dialogue, and challenging difficulty that I highly recommend to any hack and slash fan out. Thanks for helping me out, Sky! No problem! See you later! Oh, and uh, make sure you try out Dustin Melissian Tail. It's pretty awesome and still really deserves more attention. Sure, I'll play it when I get a chance. And my own PS4. Why isn't that game available for the PS3?
Oh, this fast healing stuff is gonna come in real handy. If there's a video game genre that I've been getting more into recently besides RPGs, it's fighting games. I don't mean body fighting games like Smash Bros or PlayStation All-Stars. I mean actual classic fighting games like Tekken, Soul Calibur, and Street Fighter. I played a bunch of them in 2014 with Mortal Kombat 9 and Persona 4 Arena Ultimax being honorable mentions. And I already talked about Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 earlier on the list. And then we have number 9 on this list. Blaze Blue Clone of Phantasma. This game was a bitch to even get in the first place, due to the fact that it's not available in the Portuguese PlayStation Store for some reason. I swear, Oxus has something against us Europeans. Thankfully, I got a PSN card from the UK to finally buy it using a UK account. Moving on. Clone of Phantasma is a sequel to Continuum Shift and, as with any good sequel, it improves on a lot of stuff from its predecessor. First off, the story is now a bit easier to follow for newcomers who chose to start out the Breeze Blue series with this game, although the story will still confuse them. The first few cutscenes give them a general idea of what the story is all about, not to mention it's now separated into three different scenarios. Instead of going through a story mode with each character in the roster, even though some of them don't have any significance to the main plot. These scenarios are Clone of Phantasma, which is the main focus of the story, Six Heroes, which gives us a backstory of how the series began, and Sector 7, which focuses on Kokonoe working on a plan to stop the main villain of the game, while dealing with another monster on the rules. There are also a bunch of new characters to play as, such as Miss Fanservice Mercenary Bullet, the fabulous and mysterious boss dresser Amane, the bloodthirsty mad dog Azrael, and number one ladies man Kaguya, who is the best new character in the game, no questions asked. Gameplay wise, there's not much that has changed aside from a few tweaks to most of the characters like updated finishes for Carl and Arachne, but then again I'm just a casual player, so I might be missing something that professional players like this guy tend to notice right away. By the way, word of advice, don't ever face him online series in stylish mode. I went that the hard way. Overall, Blaze Blue Clone of Phantasma is a great fighting game with a story that's somewhat easy to follow for newcomers, awesome new characters, and gameplay that's still as flashy and fluid as ever. Though, the soundtrack is kind of a mixed bag, with some things being an improvement and others sound like they took a few steps back. But it's still a very fun game to play, especially if you're a fan of anime or fighting games in general. Now, if you excuse me, I'm gonna practice for a little bit. You know what? Screw technical mode. I'll settle for casual since I'm a lazy bastard. Thank you very much.